Today, acting director of national intelligence, Rick Grinnell, declassified the full text of an email, the famous email that Susan Rice sent to herself on Inauguration Day, January 20th, 2017, the final day of the Obama administration, in fact, the final minutes. The email is weird and very telling. It consists of Rice summarizing for herself, apparently, a meeting that she attended two weeks before about the Michael Flynn investigation. The newly revealed text, the part that was redacted before, says this, and we're quoting, Director Comey affirmed that he is proceeding by the book as it relates to law enforcement. From a national security perspective, Comey said he does have some concerns that incoming national security advisor Flynn is speaking frequently with the Russian ambassador Kislyak. Comey said it could be an issue as it relates to sharing sensitive information. President Obama asked if Comey was saying that the National Security Council should not pass sensitive information related to Russia to Flynn. Comey replied, potentially. He added that he has no indication thus far that Flynn has passed classified information to Kislyak, but he noted that the level of communication is unusual, unquote. So that paragraph raises an awful lot of questions, none of them good. First, and the most obvious, in an email to herself, Susan Wright's notes three times that the investigation was being done, quote, by the book. That seems odd. How often do you remind yourself to follow the law in memos to yourself? Could it be that Rice was expecting the email would be read later by others? That's a rhetorical question. But far more questions should be asked about Jim Comey. Comey himself apparently said there was no evidence that Michael Flynn had shared anything classified with Ambassador Kislyak. In other words, Flynn had done nothing wrong. But Comey didn't care. He said he had concerns, utterly subjective concerns, that the incoming national security advisor of the United States was speaking to the ambassador of a major power. That was unusual, according to Jim Comey. In other words, a man who was never elected to anything decided that he could withhold information from the new democratically elected government. He could deny them access to intelligence with no evidence whatsoever of actual crimes. How's that for subverting democracy? This new document confirms what has been obvious for a very long time. The entire Russia collusion story was perhaps history's largest example of political projection. The Trump campaign never sabotaged democracy. They were the result of democracy. A guy's running a reality show on NBC and 20 minutes later, he's the president. That's democracy. Jim Comey and the Obama administration had no respect for democracy. They were threatened by it. So they tried to subvert it. We should know more about this because it gets to the heart of everything. In the meantime, Britt Hume is Fox's senior political analyst. We're always delighted to have him on the show. So, Britt, you've been around Washington for so long. Let me just ask you a context question. It doesn't seem constitutionally permitted to me for a direct, an unelected director of, an F, of the FBI to withhold national security information from an incoming duly elected administration. It doesn't seem like that would be a well, lot. Well, it doesn't seem possible when you think about it, Tucker, because, you know, the incoming national security uh, uh, assistant to the president, national security advisor, and the, and the new president himself are going to take possession of all classified information, and the president has ultimate authority over all of it. So those officials are entitled to see whatever they want. Yes. And it's not clear to me what the director of the FBI is talking about here. This whole memo... Um, is suspicious on many counts. First of all, it was written 15 days after the events it described had happened. And as you noted, Tucker, uh, there are several references in there to the president saying, I want everything done by the book, and Director Comey affirming that he's doing everything by the book. Of course, Mr. By the Book Comey, four days after this memo was written and as uh, the administration was leaving, four days later, Director Comey, still in office at the FBI, slips around to the White House without the Justice Department's knowledge or approval, sends a couple, excuse me, sends two agents down to the White House. <clears throat> He's bragged about how he knew that this was not according to protocol where you're supposed to do interviews in the White House uh, through the White House Counsel's Office. He, uh, he avoided all that. That wasn't exactly by the book, was it? And that was the famous interview for which this whole case against Flynn has proceeded. 
So, you know, you add it all up and it looks very suspicious. And now Susan Rice is out with a statement tonight saying that she welcomes this release of the additional uh, redacted material that was in the memo. And furthermore, she wishes that all the con all of the transcripts of the overheard conversations between Kislyak and Flynn could now be released, implying thereby that there was some really suspicious stuff in there. Well, if there is, I'll believe it when I see it. The press has treated this like a non-story and, in fact, criticized this channel for even covering it. I wonder in the next administration or two administrations down the road, if the director of the FBI or CIA or NSA or the, or the head of national intelligence seems to be working independently and against the administration, will that seem like a story to them, do you think? Well, of course it would. And, and this is a story. Look. Uh, we've been criticized here at Fox News for, for covering this story. The new revelations have been the Flynn case. And of course, now we have a motion today just filed to, to have the judge uh, removed from the case and so on. This is a big story. And the irregularities in the handling of the whole Russia investigation was a big story. Uh, it's just that the journalists don't like to hear about the irregularities because they bought the whole package. Uh, they went along and pursued this, uh, engaged in this headlong pursuit of this Russia collusion theory, which blew up in their faces. And now they don't want to hear about it. And in a sense, I guess I don't blame them because it was the worst journalistic fiasco in my more than 50 years of journalism. And it continues. I think that's right. This is not just about Trump or even primarily it's a threat to our system, which has worked pretty well for 240 years. I, you know, we should we should fix this and, and clean these things up. Great. Great to see you. Thanks so much for that. You bet, Tucker. Thank you. you thank you. Well, here's 